Hello everyone, my name is Dan the Tutor. This is a clip from one of my weekly group tutoring sessions at the University of Delaware for Physics 201. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you and enjoy. Now we're going to go on to the next topic, which is torque. So before we do the example problems here, I do want to give a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a blurb, my opinion about torque, the equations that you need to know, and here they are. So first, it's good to know what the definition of torque is. Torque is going to be defined by force times distance, which is also the same as radius, times sine theta. Now here's the thing about sine theta, and I may have said the same thing about work when that equation was force times distance times cosine theta for work. I don't like sine theta. I'm actually gonna cross out the sine theta here, or maybe even this entire equation. And instead, I'm gonna say force perpendicular times distance or force perpendicular times radius if you want to draw r instead it's the exact same thing now why did i do that well it's because i don't always give you theta the right angle for sine sometimes it's cosine sometimes it's sine how do you know which one it is okay let's talk about an example of torque and it's the most classic example let's look at a door so this is the hinge i'm drawing this is my door again here's the hinge over here and this is a door Okay, let's say the door swings out this way. Now my question to you is, if I have a force, think about this, if I have a force pointing up and to the right like this, and we see we here we have two components, or at least we have an angle. We have a, let's say, 20 degree angle. The angle itself doesn't matter. But which component of force matters? I'll draw the different components. We have a force component going up like this in red, and we have a force component in blue going to the right. Think about this, which component, the red or the blue, is actually causing this door to turn? In other words, if you only had the red force or the blue force, at least that direction, which one would get the door to move? If you pull a door in the red direction, you can even try it right now or after this lesson's over, that door ain't moving. You're like trying to pull the door off its hinge, it's just not going to happen. In order to make the door actually move, it's the blue force. It's perpendicular to your radius. And by the way, whenever I say F perpendicular, it's always perpendicular to the radius. And where's my radius? Right here. Or you could say distance D. And that is what we're talking about when I say F perpendicular. So in this example, I have the blue is F perpendicular, which then means the red is F parallel. And I'm going to just ignore it because I don't care about parallel. And then if I ask myself, what is F perpendicular? Well, I see it's the opposite leg of my angle, right? Like there's my angle, 20 degrees. This is a right triangle. F perpendicular is the opposite side. Oh, so in this case, it was F sine theta times the distance. But again, I don't recommend memorizing sine. And is this easy? No, this is very difficult, but the only way you're going to get better is with practice. So definitely don't just blindly use sine. Actually think about it every time you look at this because it is challenging and it really can mess you up. Oh, and one last thing, I, I do need to mention this. A lot of times we're going to be talking about net torque. Net torque. In other words, all of the torques added together going counterclockwise minus the torques going clockwise. We define counterclockwise as the positive motion, in case you're wondering why. It's a good question. I've wondered that myself for a while as well. But think about this. This counterclockwise notation, that arrow I just drew, is the exact same direction if you think of the unit circle. The unit circle also goes counterclockwise around your circle, starting at a zero degree angle right there. So that's why counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is typically negative. If you want, though, you know, I, I didn't tell you this, guys, um, you know, if, I don't get me in trouble. But if you want to, you can actually define clockwise as positive and counterclockwise as negative, as long as you're consistent, as long as you keep that notation the whole problem. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want me to start doing free weekly group sessions at your university, Please post in the comments below or email me at dan at danthetutor.com. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.